Hey guys, we're here today to upgrade the rear sway bar on my GTI. So a lot of people who own a GTI or any front wheel drive hatchback probably knows that one of the main handling upgrades you can do is a rear sway bar upgrade. Now the reason they upgrade the rear is because in a front wheel drive car, a lot of the weight is at the front. So when you're turning in, you're pushing a lot of weight forward into the ground and you're actually lifting up the in the inner rear wheel off the ground sometimes if you turn in very sharp. It's called doglegging, tripoding, whatever you want to call it. It happens. And when you stiffen up the rear sway bar, which is allowing it to kind of go up that way, depending on which way you're turning, you actually keep that contact patch on the rear tire on the ground. So in keeping it on the ground, you're actually keeping the front a little bit more on the ground too, helping it dig in better and get better traction on the front inner wheel of the turn. So that's actually helping you turn in sharper, turn in smoother and increase your in corner speeds, your apex speeds. Personally, I didn't want to go too extreme on the rear sway bar upgrade. So to start, I went with the 23 millimeter ECS tuning solid adjustable rear sway bar. Now, I'm not too worried about the thickness of the sway bar because this bar is solid. So it's going to be that much better than the 21 millimeter stock sway bar. Now it's 21.4 millimeters, something like that, or it's 23.4 for the ECS. Anyways, we're just rounding down for simplicity. But I got the adjustable version so we can actually make it stiffer, like even more stiffer. So what that is, is that's two holes on the end of the sway bar where the end links go. And if you do the one further in on the bar, it's gonna be stiffer and that's what we want. 034 Motorsports makes a 26 millimeter solid rear sway bar that is supposed to work perfectly with the front sway bar that I'm probably gonna upgrade to at some point, but I didn't wanna go too far into the sway bar upgrading without kind of figuring out how they work, what they do, and how well it actually increases handling in corners. Because I want to just learn more about cars, sway bars, suspension, engines, air, everything. I wanna learn all about all of it, all the time. And I may not be an expert ever. There are people out there who understand some of this stuff so much better than I ever could, and I want them to do that. I wanna be an entertainer. Those people are teachers. They're very different in my eyes. And I madly respect the people who are teachers. They're so smart at what they do. And I just gobble up all that information. Can I spout it back sometimes? Yes. Am I good at it? Meh, not really. But with that said, I really wanted to learn the differences between a 23 and 26 when you upgrade, just so that we can get a little bit more in depth in the handling characteristics of a GTI. And that is actually because a sway bar, a rear sway bar for the GTI is going to be one of the best handling upgrades that you can do. I don't have it on yet, so I'm just kind of saying that. Here is to praying that this is one of the best handling upgrades I ever do on a car. <laughs> It'd be real awkward if it wasn't. Real awkward. But since, since a lot of people tout it as one of the first things to do, I'm doing it when I get into handling. Now we have actually just done a flush mount dynamic plus spacer kit from 034 more for looks and a little bit of in corner stability has been added because you're creating a larger footprint for the car to travel on. Now this rear sway bar is going to reduce body roll even more because it is stiffening two points of the car across itself to keep that inside wheel with a better contact patch on the ground. So we are taking a couple turns just to show you what the car is doing right now when we go through some of these turns and you'll see, here comes a turn, turn in, little bit of roll, not a lot, it's doing pretty good actually, a little bit more roll, but we're looking to eliminate as much of that as possible to keep turn in very sharp to increase this, the apex speed, whatever you want to call it. So what I wanted to show you was a couple of turn-in shots in slow motion from my church's parking lot, just so you kind of see 
a little bit of a before and after on what this raceway bar is doing. It is bringing the rear back down to increase that contact patch on the ground on the inside wheel. Now I did a couple of tests. I just did a higher speed turn and then a slalom with a huge U-turn on both sides. And that'll give me a better understanding of what the car is gonna be doing with this rear sway bar upgrade. So the rear sway bar upgrade is actually one of my most anticipated mods for this GTI that I have done yet. I am so, so excited. I'm trying to use a different word than excited because it's the same word I use all the time, but I am just intrigued. I am bewitched by this rear sway bar upgrade. And I am so looking forward to doing it that we are gonna take this car back into the garage and get this thing swapped out lickety split so that we can take it back out and just have so much more turning fun. So back to the shop. The rear sway bar install was very straightforward. If you'd like to watch the full install video, hiccups and all, please head over to my YouTube channel. So remember what I said a few minutes ago? Our rear sway bar for the GTI is going to be one of the best handling upgrades that you can do. Well, combined with my lack of knowledge of suspension mods and lack of experience with them, ah, uh, that is true. This is so far the best handling mod for a GTI that I have done. It, it truly is staggering. I was, I was genuinely not anticipating the results that we got. I was, I was waiting for like, oh yeah, this, this feels a little better, but no, this, this is genuinely something else. And I'm excited to one day do an even stiffer sway bar, the 034 Motorsports 26 millimeter sway bar, because that's gonna be fun. If the 23 has already done so much, 26 is gonna be just out of this world. The sensation you get through each corner is kind of amazing. It's almost like the rear of the car is now leading the charge through each bend because that sway bar, that stiffening, is just bringing that back end around so much more. It's truly something to behold and I absolutely love it. The turn in is so crisp and sharp now and there's almost no body roll. It is, it, it is genuinely beautiful and this car really does handle like it's on rails. I'd, heard that saying before and I've had some cars that have handled pretty good, but I've never really had that sensation of what it truly is like to have a car that handles like it's on rails. And this does, it It really is amazing. You just chuck it in and it's just like, cool, let's keep going. Coming up to a turn, minimal body roll. Oh, absolutely love it. If the car in front of me was going a little bit faster, that'd have been nice too the stiffening of the rear really just plants the nose in on turn in and it is truly sensational, truly fabulous, truly any other word but fantastic because I use that way too much. Now the adjustable end links that I've put on actually help with preload. So it's the sway bar isn't loaded up on one side or the other. Um, so it's just perfectly level across the board. And I'm, I'm glad I did those. I know ECS says you can use this 23 millimeter bar with the stock end links, but they recommend using stiffer, beefier, adjustable um, end links in the end. Um, so I was gonna replace them pretty quick. I already had them with me, um, but I'm glad I did because these fit great. Everything's adjusted very nicely so that this is handling insanely crisply. It's like a fresh bag of lettuce. Just break into it, crisp, that's what I mean. I don't really know what else to say, but like all these corners that I would go a certain speed at and be like, ooh, we're, we're kind of pushing the limit here. I'm genuinely, genuinely finding more speed through these corners. It is, it's weird. It's, it's, it's almost hard to describe what exactly it feels like going around these turns. It's just amazing how you can send it through these turns. And that, that back end really feels like it's being brought around. There is, there is genuine rotation in the car when you're going through these turns. I know in Formula One, they talk a lot about rotation. They talk a lot about oversteer, understeer, the front being brought around, the back being brought around. But I never truly understood what that was like until now. This there genuinely is a rotation in this car that the 
the back end is being brought around like nothing else. It's so crisp on turn in. The feedback is incredible. You really know when you're pushing the limits of the handling of this car so much more now because you can start to feel the back end give out, start to lean a little bit. You're like, okay, maybe that's a little too fast through that corner. I wanna keep this planted. Now, speaking of planted, this body roll is almost gone. It's, it's crazy. If, if you turn in hard enough, if you turn in fast enough, you're gonna get some body roll. But until you basically stiffen it to the point where it's not even moving, you're always gonna have some of that. That's just how it works with spring, suspension, everything else. But because the, two, the points across the rear of the suspension are stiffened, that roll back there where most of it is happening is incredibly minimized. So when I did the wheel spacers, I noticed that the responsiveness of turn-in was, was lost a little bit. And I was, I was kind of sad because the, the turn-in on this car was what was kind of so good is you could just chuck it and it would bite and go right in. Um, but stiffening up the rear helps with the front and the grip you have up there because it's bringing the contact patch on the rear back onto the ground. And because that whole side is being brought down on the inside of the turn, the inner front wheel is actually has a better contact patch as well. And with that improved contact patch, with that improved stiffening, the turn-in is back. That responsiveness is there again. And it, it is just as amazing as I remember it. I absolutely love how this car handles. It, it really does just have this very, very, very sporty feel to it, unlike anything I've ever driven. Now I have modded it quite a bit, and there's people who've modded it so much more than I have, but this is, this is pretty extensive modding and it is fantastic and it is my favorite car to drive so far. I know I got pretty far into the Audi, but nowhere near as much as this. I was actually working on suspension upgrades on the Audi, but I never got to it, unfortunately. Um, I'm kind of sad because I love handling mods. Like I'm, I'm okay with going really fast in a straight line. That's kind of cool. But like I mentioned before, mountain roads are my favorite. Going super fast around the twisties is where it's at. It, it's so much fun and improving the handling of this car to make it handle that much better in corners, is, uh, it gets me giddy inside. I'm like laughing, it's so fun. This mod has truly been worth everything that I've put into it. So excited to do coilovers eventually, to get some lowering and make this slip car look really cool because um, the handling is something that I, I truly love about this car. We are gonna get up to stage two. We're not gonna do stage three because about 260, 270 horsepower is really as much as I want to push through the front wheels alone, through cornering, through acceleration and everything. If I want a 400 horsepower Golf, I'm gonna go with the Golf R, uh, but that would also mean buying a new car. So don't expect 300 plus horsepower out of this thing because that's not really the goal. But we have built an awesome car so far and I absolutely love it. We have a long way to go but where we are is still so cool. Holy cow, that turn in. I don't know if I'll ever get over that. It is so much fun. Oh, absolutely love it. All right, corner says 20, 25 miles an hour. You're doing a little more than that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so good. So stinking good. We started to get a little bit of understeer there, a little, little bit of squirrelies, but this car still held on great at even faster than I normally take it when I'm taking it fast. Oh, truly, truly an amazing mod. If, if you're thinking about upgrading the rear sway bar, don't think about it, do it. This is, this is lunacy. This is amazing. I absolutely love this. Oh, you, you will you will never regret upgrading the sway bar on your GTI. There is, there that is something to be said about this. It is truly beautiful. I love it. This this mod, seriously worth every penny and worth more. Honestly, if if you're looking at spending good money on this on this mod, the sway bar and the brackets and the end links, 
do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I'm gonna say it again, do it. I love it. It's amazing. Oh, now I bet with coilovers, this thing is gonna handle like a stinking dream, but where we're at right now is amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm so, so happy, so in love with this car. And every time I do something, I just fall more in love with it. It's what the GTI does, it gets under your skin. Like something not bacteria or fungus related because that's just kind of gross, but something that, that loves you and just really, really clings on to you. You can't get rid of it. I, I never want to get rid of this car. This is, this is by far my favorite car. That Audi, I absolutely loved it but this is something different. This is, this is truly staggering. I absolutely love it. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been tuning in. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. You guys are the best. You, you truly are. And thank you for watching this specific video as well. Please have a great day. Please subscribe. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye.